this is our April uh, 2021 regularly scheduled meeting. And uh, we have with us uh, this evening uh, uh, myself, Dr. Park, Ed Kelly, Jacques Brignac, Lucian Dragolsky, uh, let's see, Tom Roy, and um, uh, Tony Piazza, <laughs> our distinguished super, whose name shows up as Tom Roy <laughs> for some reason. And Jay Sheehan is on the phone. Not even, Correct. Uh, we, we can't see him, but uh, that does sound like his voice, so I do believe it's in fact him. <clears throat> so um, we have uh, a reasonable agenda for the evening. Uh, we start off with the safety brief. And uh, since we are all in our own respective places, I'll have to say something that's generally applicable and not to the building. Not that I necessarily stayed to uh, safety briefs uh, relating to the building when we're there. Um, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I've noticed in and around the state that people are just getting a little bit too uh, relaxed about social distancing protocol. And I think that, you know, the science that has been amassed about this virus is pretty detailed now. Uh, we know what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's still time to remain vigilant until we reach the point of herd immunity. Otherwise, you know, we're placing ourselves at risk, we're placing our economy at risk. And so, I mean, when you go to the gas station, you know, and you're three feet away from someone or four feet away from someone at the next pump, you know, wear your mask, you know? And uh, I mean, I always have a mask with me when I'm outside. Uh, when I'm going inside, I always wear a mask. When people approach me on the pathway, the bike path, whatever, I put my mask on. And I mean, that is really our best defense until everyone's vaccinated. So I would encourage you all to uh, remain vigilant and uh, not let your guard down. Yep, good point. So uh, safety, uh, the, the uh, number two, uh, Hicks, Hendricks Lane discussion. So, Tony, what do you have for us on the Hendricks Lane? Um, Hendricks Lane, if you remember, this is the uh, development that was off of Climax Road. And as part of the agreement um, for installing the sanitary sewers there, they were going to bring the um, line between two houses and give us a an easement, basically, from front corner and front corner to house mm -hmm. um, 20 feet wide. Um, for some reason that, um, they did not bring the sewer line all the way to, um, the property line. Um, we found this out probably two months ago, give or take. Um, unfortunately now they have foundations in, so it makes it a little bit harder to dig at this point in time. Um, we tried to get permission from the resident behind them, um, to get, permission to go onto his property to install the rest of the sewer line, have the contractor install the rest of the sewer line. Um, unfortunately, we would have had to, they would have, they, they would have had to taken down a tree um, that the home, the homeowner behind the property does not want that tree taken down at this point in time. Um, and he didn't want to really give us permission to go on his property to uh, install the sanitary sewer the rest of the way. He basically um, wants them to install it um, as it was approved without getting in his property. Um, th there's a lot of there's a lot of little stuff that went in there. Um, uh, I'm trying. Jump, I was going to say, Tony, let me jump in and help you. <laughs> Bear in mind the purpose of extending the sewer is that as if at some point in the future this abutting property owner <clears throat> decides to either develop his property or look to connect, this is going to be the way to connect um that property so in many ways there's a lot of benefits to this property owner to do this um, as i think most of us recall this was a very controversial subdivision when it went in 
There may or may not still be a level of hard feelings. And now we, we, we're um, at the decision point of the developer did not meet all of the requirements that they should have met. They should have, in hindsight being 2020, um, come to Tony or myself to say, listen, we're having this problem. What can we do? Um, prior to putting in houses and foundations. Um, and, and I think the question now is, do we, what is, what is the most reasonable um, solution to this? And I think Tony, um, we had talked about, um, they can still dig to the property line. It would just be far more challenging. The other question was, should we just have them end with a manhole, which would allow for a future connection and as long as our easement extends out to the property line. I think those were the two primary options that we were looking at. Yeah, and, and with with digging, if if they, they did dig out to the property line, they would be, be basically invading on the tree, the tree's root ball. Um, so and it, it may compromise that tree that this homeowner doesn't want taken out at this point in time. Do you guys have any, any visuals on this? Like, you know, we're trying, it's, it's hard to kind of picture this all, and I'm sure that I'm not the only one. Do you, uh, even at Google Maps, if you could share your screen with me. Uh, Google great. Maps, unfortunately, Google Maps didn't have any update with all the, um, the stuff, but I have the easement map showing the two house foundations. Um, I mean, so the easement, did they, did someone agree in writing this person who does not now want the, uh, uh, uh any, any traversing on his prop, his or her property, did that person actually agree in writing to the easement? Uh, we didn't have to have an easement on his property. The easement stops at the property line. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it stops. Okay. Yeah. Now that oh. it's up on screen, Paul, if you can see the, um, lowest horizontal line where, where the, all of the highlighters end, that lowest horizontal line is the property line and the um, abutting property owner owns from that property line down to the bottom of the page. All and right, then so where's the tree? The tree, the tree, if you can see my cursor, the tree is right in this area right here. Okay. So, so what did they do wrong or what didn't they do? Uh, basically, they stopped the sewer line right here. Yeah. Um, because when they were when they were installing the sewer line, they, the machine they had actually was up against that tree. So oh. they so they <laughs> physically couldn't move the machine any farther. Um, I did not find out about it until two months ago. <laughs> I'm sorry. So they had to be on the person's property to install the line up to the property. Now they would have to be. Because of the foundations? Yeah, because of the way the foundations are set. Yeah. You can't do, you have to use this particular machine. You can't do it some other way. It's thir This line is 13 feet deep. So you need a pretty big machine to, to do the work. Okay. Um, now, what direction does the sewage flow? Obviously, it flows to the top of the screen? Flows to the top of the yeah. screen, correct. And then this property owner, would they be the only one if that green line that would be served if the green line continued? Um, well, he owns six and a half acres back there. So he could develop that spot if he wanted to as well. Okay. So, I mean, we could stop it where it is, put a manhole. And if he wants to develop his property, he's got to pay for that line to be continued to his property, right? Correct. Yeah. All right. Can you, we can make, you can tell them you could get it done now for free or we can charge you later if you want to develop your property. What, in, what about in terms of the, the uh, an assessment? I mean, has his property been assessed? No, because he does not, he does, he has not been assessed for anything because this line was put in by the, by the, this developer. So he does not get us. We, do, we don't put assessments on people for projects that other people install. So the green line, if it continued to his property line, it wouldn't be a lateral. Correct. It would, it's okay, a, it's so he wouldn't, line. he wouldn't be served, I guess. Right. He, would, he would have to put a manhole in on his property anyway. Yeah. Now, do, uh, that's a developer putting that green line in? Yes. Is that right? That is correct. Now, because there's potential downstream benefit to other properties, is there any kind of a uh, adjustment we make 
for that or you know how we do it in other projects no the only the only adjust the, only, the 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 benefit is that they don't got, get charged an assessment for this sewer line that was put in by somebody else okay and the reverse isn't true like the the people uh putting the development in right now wouldn't get a credit for potential downstream users that is correct okay and that's our policy. I mean, I, yes, this is a little is unusual. Way, so yeah. that is the way we have been operating. Correct. Okay. So, what rights would the this property owner who's now objecting have to actually extend on to the other property and reach from his property to the green line? He, we can allow him the right. It's a sanitary sewer easement in our favor. So we give them the right to access it and connect to it if we want to. What is that green line below? Is it just ground? It's not paved road? It's, yeah, it's just below um, turf, yes. Right, and, okay. and if, you look, if you look, Ed, where you see the, um, the pen mark where it says 5.0, that rectangle yep. is one house find foundation. And then just to the right of the farthest yellow line, um, where you see the number nine and the number 52 in a rectangle. Yeah. That's the next house. Okay. So that, that's the problem with the equipment, I guess. Yeah. They are, these houses are on top of each other. Yeah. I, I drove by there. I was, yeah, I saw that. Um, so I, I guess, Tony, we just give the property owner a choice. You can, you know, I don't know what it would cost him to finish up the green line on his own or he gets it for free now, you know, I guess the, you know, but the tree is the issue. I, I, I think it's, it's, I, I don't think it's that property owner's choice. I think it's the, the, the Hendrix lane um, developers yeah. problem. And it's, he has to do whatever we tell him. Yeah, no, I'm um, just saying, but the, if the only way to continue the green line is if the property owner agrees to the, uh, the tree issue being resolved. So it stops where it stops. If he wants to keep his tree and the, he just needs to know that, or she needs to know downstream that if they do want to put sewers on that six acres that they have, that the uh, extension of the green line would be at their expense. Whereas now there would be no cost to them other than the tree. Did I get that uh, right? Yeah, but I think in the big scheme of things, it's not such a big expense to extend the line. If you end with a manhole, when they extend the line, they don't have to go straight. They can go after under an angle from there. They can go to the left or to the right to avoid the tree if he wants to keep the tree. Well, he, he can't go to the right, you know, Why not? following the line because the foundation's there. And that's- no. The... no, 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 no. You put a manhole at the end of the green line. Yeah. And then you connect into the manhole and you come yeah. from the bottom. Yeah, but you come I, from I the bottom. That... Like you come from the left or from the right and under an angle. You don't have to go straight the way to follow this line. That's, yeah, if you, if you wanted to stay within the easement, you could move it a little bit to stay within the easement. But yeah. yes, you, you are correct, Lucia. But, 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 but what happened, Tony, I mean, again, it's a Hendrix property problem because they want, didn't do it. So if you chip it a little bit past the easement at the end of the property line, I don't think it would be a big deal. I mean, I guess. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. Is the easement the uh, yellow lines? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to work with there, but yeah, you could, you know, you got a little bit you could do. Yeah. Put the manhole as far as you can and then see what you can do. Tony, in the end, do we own this sewer pipe? And Tom, do we, do we own it? Like, does it have to be, is it something we have to maintain or is it because it's private, it's, it's theirs to maintain. Well, this is going to be owned by the WPCA. Yeah, see, that's one of the problems with this. We didn't like this easement anyway when it happened because it was just so tight. And to do any cleaning or any TV inspection or anything down the road, we weren't we weren't thrilled about this. And they made it worse. Yeah, that's a that's a good point, Jay. How do we get to that manhole if we've got to do some work there? We got to go across lawns and whatever. Yep. Yeah, that's that doesn't sound real good. And we kind of made it. We kind of deviated a little. We were kind of very kind to them. Yeah. And then they screwed it up, even yeah. on our own approval. So it, 
that's what makes me frustrated about hearing this whole story is that we, we were actually very kind of helpful and then they burned us. Well, isn't that a maxim? No good deed goes unpunished. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. right. Now, if that green line was to continue to that property owner's uh, line, would there be a manhole there at the property line, or what would what would happen? Would the pipe be underground, capped off, or what? It, yeah. What would if it went to the property line, it would be capped off at that point. Underground. Uh, underground. Yeah. It could be the one option is we could have them cap it right where it is. It, 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 it would not be detrimental to us. It's just when they um, reconnect, we, we assume they're going to want to go some direction other than straight, which is a good point for the manhole. Um, the other thought we had was by the manhole being there, it may help enforce the fact that we do have a sewer easement there so that it may prevent a shed, a swing set, a playscape, or anything else from being put up on top of uh, the sewer line. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to the person, when the person says you can have an easement to install a sewer pipe, does that include like putting a manhole in the middle of their backyard? It includes any appurtenances we want to put there. Yeah, yep, we can put anything. At this point, Paul, it's not an owner, it's the developer. Okay, so that house, oh, that house is just a foundation that hasn't been sold. I assume so, yeah. Okay. All right, so anyone who would buy would, would buy eyes open on that. What's your recommendation, Tony? Um, I, I you gotta, think you got to live with this down the down the road, you know. I mean, I, I think having the manhole there is probably the best option uh, okay. at this point. Um, it's going to be difficult for them to put in. I won't lie, but I think that's that's the best option because then it alleviates alleviate or makes it easier later on. Okay. Um, to be able to change directions if we need to change directions, things of that nature. Is there anything we need to uh, formally approve and vote on in order to make this so? Yeah, well, I yeah, I think having a, a, a motion on this one would be good because um, I actually informed this developer. I said, unless um, this is resolved some way by the WPCA and you oblige by it, you will maintain these sewers until it is installed as they approved. Okay. Let me just think for a minute. I think prob probably, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, everybody, but I think a motion to the fact of uh, installing a manhole where the line ends at this point in time, um, and that would be the end of the project. I could even help clean that up a little bit more is, is I would think it would be a motion to amend the um, subdivision sewer plans as discussed during this meeting to end at the existing location where the manhole is recommended by the WPCA superintendent. All right, so let's, let's just talk about that a little bit more. And I don't wanna belabor the point. If we put the manhole there, then that technically terminates the sewer line itself. And anything that the property owner on the lower part of the screen would want to do to connect to it would technically be a lateral, right? No, he would still have to extend out. Well, yes, he could, but he would still have to extend up. Uh, let me rephrase that. No, he cannot tie directly into the manhole with a lateral. Um, he would have to extend the sewer line out and then tie into an eight inch pipe. Oh, so, so all right. I was misunderstanding that. So, so the so the 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 manhole is is still going to have to have a sewer on the other end of it. Well, we don't have to. We can leave it open, or we we leave. They can core a, a, a hole into the side of the manhole if they want to change direction. If you if you put a pipe in there for that now, you limit them as far as what direction they want to go coming out of the manhole. So they can core a hole in the manhole whenever they want to tie into it. 
I see. Uh, Tony, that foundation on the left, where is the lateral or where's the connection for that house? Um, Look like midway, Tony? Yeah, it's actually closer to the street. It's on that side, but it's closer to the street. It's on the, the right hand the side of the driveway. The house on the right, where's that one? Same there is an, there is an arrow. There is an arrow on the left that shows it's a little line sort of perpendicular to the green line. Okay. And that's sewer lateral. Oh, that, where it's 14.1 feet? Uh, no, no, further four. down. Go down. No. Nope. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's, I'm no, sorry. Go, go to the one right here. There. That, there's one right yeah. here. This is one lateral right here. Okay. And I'm trying to read Maybe the other one is further down. Oh, um, it's this one here, right here. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And from that second lateral to where the manhole is going to be, do you know how many feet that is? Um, it's about 10 feet. Okay. Yeah, the man, the man, or the end of the line right now is right here. About 10 feet from that lateral. Yeah. Now the property at the lower part of the screen, you said that's six acres, roughly which direction would the largest part of the acreage be if they wanted to develop that? Um, that the, this line would actually end up right in the middle of the entire parcel. Okay. So there could be like a, uh, which way to serve that parcel, which way would the sewer line have to go? Just kind of straight to the bottom of the screen or? Yeah, basically straight through, yeah. Yeah, okay. <coughs> okay, uh, I'm, I think I'm okay with what I want to do or what we should do. Anybody else uh, have any remarks to uh, provide or are we ready for Tom to restate uh, what he wants one of us to put forth as a uh, technical motion for adoption. Yeah, please, please restate the motion. Uh, to amend the proposed sewer plans for Hendricks Cottage as recommended by WPCA plant superintendent to end the line with a manhole for to allow for a future connection. Does anyone want to so move? So move. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Just one one item of discussion, if I may. Um, <clears throat> you know, so it's ending where it's ending. Then if it needs to be extended, it's a currently developer. It will be at the cost of the of that property owner, which is no longer going to be a developer. No, it would be at the cost of whoever would benefit from the sewer extension. Okay, so we're we're making a the, the the motion includes basically a waiver of the completion of the line. So got it. Okay. And the other thing to keep in mind is when this project is complete, and after um, you still have a chance to vote on this for its final acceptance. Hey, All right. Hey. So you're saying that we are waiving the requirement to complete the line. But we also need to make sure that we are preserving and are not otherwise amending the extent of our easement. The, the easement, easement will remain as is, and we are preserving all of our rights. And we are, the line is still complete. We are just ending it 15, 20 feet shorter than, than what was originally proposed. But well, being it's not complete, because someday it's going to have to be extended further. Maybe. 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 Okay. Uh, Tony, just, just a quick question. That extra 10, 15 feet to put that pipe into the line, what would that cost? Do you know? 100 bucks a foot. Yeah, at 13 feet down? Three, 400 mm -hmm. bucks a foot at least. Uh, that's, well, we're, we're actually that's running at about $190 a foot. Okay, so 200 we're a doing, foot. So. so it's not significant, right? $5,000, give or take. Yeah, okay. I mean, if it was significant, you might have a little leverage with that property owner. Say, hey, you know, if you ever decide to develop that, it's going to cost you ten grand just to, of your money instead of this other guy. You get it for mm -hmm. free for the sake of a tree, you know? Anyhow, I, 
I don't know if it's worth another discussion with the homeowner or whatever. Or maybe notice before we act that yeah. they, that, that, you know, send them some written notice saying that we are considering acting next month on, assuming there's no exigency here, on uh, a particular course of action, the result of which will mean that uh, you likely would be the one who would have the burden and expense of uh, extending the sewer from the manhole to your property should you ever wish to uh, connect to the sewer line. And so that this is your last opportunity to have it done at somebody else's expense. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah. If it's uh, any help to add to the conversation, both Tony and myself spoke to him at different times. Um, the, the person who currently owns that property um, does a level of construction work on his own. He has excavation equipment. So I would say consider him to be a um, fully aware individual in terms okay. of the cost and the level of effort um, for what we're proposing. All right. So you don't think notice is necessary given the specifics of this person's uh, life? Based on our conversation, he was very comfortable with the manhole being left as a place for him to tie into in the future. Okay. Okay. I'm good. Thank you for the discussion, Chairman. Yeah, good it was good. All right. Are we ready to put her to a vote? That does does any of the previous discussion need to uh, go into our, our motion? That is a good point. Well, technically, unless someone wants to amend the motion, there's still a motion on the floor. So you have to either vote on the motion or someone can make a, a motion to amend the motion. Okay. By, by rule. But, but the, 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 the discussion that we just had doesn't really affect the motion. Unless someone thinks it does so, and wants to make a new motion. Okay. All right. You know, there was the one point about the waiver of the requirement that it be completed from where the manhole will be to the end of the property line. Well, if we make the, you know, the motion on the floor is a waiver. So if we say we're, um, you know, allowing them to end at the manhole, then we are waiving that. So I, ju I just brought it up as a, just so you know, if we do this, we're waiving the, the completion of that line. Okay, I'm good with that. I don't okay. think we need to okay. end it further. Okay. Do we uh, do we get anything in return for this waiver from the developer? <laughs> we have some leverage for over something, Tony. That you, uh, I, I would hope that we'll, we won't have to deal with the project anymore. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's there's nothing else that's contentious, or we're working on with the developer where this could be like, hey, you know. You're not, off the hook here. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a lot of money, but you're not, off the not, hook here. So, not for the WPCA, unless unless we got something for public works that we want to hold them for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, you know, we take every action and look at every circumstance. You know, sui generis. You know, as it being unique by itself, and what are the particular merits of anything? I don't. I don't like to think about horse trading uh, when we serve the public. So, okay. All righty. Okay. Are we ready to put her to a vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. All right. We are off my regular pace. It's 730. We're only to item number three. <laughs> fee schedule discussion and possibly set for a public hearing tony so if you um if you, if you guys had a chance to look i can sh i'll share my screen again which has our uh our good mathematical model that we've been using for the past several years and i will zoom in a little here uh, so we can see it <laughs> <laughs> is that is that big enough or do i need to make it bigger no that's i think good. that's good that's good okay um so uh, i mean basically our 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 revenue was staying pretty consistent 
um, right, just over $4 million coming in. Um, O and M, um, we've actually done very, very well over the past few years. Um, uh, most, most of our increases have been, um, because of insurance and, and salary raises, stuff like that. Um, and as you guys know, this year, we actually held our budget at a 0% increase. Um, we, we, we tightened our belt across the board, um, to try to help everybody in the, in this situation. Um, the one thing that I'll point in here, um, for our capital improvement projects for um, three years out, I put there's, you'll see a, a capital plan of $1.4 million. I put in there as a placeholder, a million dollars if we have to, if, if we have to repair our primary clarifiers. Um, next year, we are gonna be doing a study to see if we can abandon them um, and remove them from, from service. Um, since we paid off our clean water fund loan, uh, we no, no longer fall under restrictions um, for them have doing work uh, as part of the plant upgrade. So we, we have a little bit of leeway there. So that, that million dollars, just a placeholder. Um, so best case is after we do our engineering study on that, um, we can remove them from service and do some demolition work. Um, so that's why you see that $1.4 million there. Um, obviously the, the big expenses this year are the, you know, the um, 1.3 million with the um, brick grant work for the berm around the plant. So if that, again, if we don't get the grant, we, we have no plans on doing that work. So that's $750,000 that could potentially come back into our reserve fund. And we have the six hundred thousand dollars we're using to finish lining the terrafill section. Um, other than that, our cap, our clean water, or our capital improvement projects are pretty much staying right around the five hundred thousand dollar mark every year going out. Um, I think we're and we're still above our five million dollars in reserve going out a couple of years. All right. So I, I, at this point, I. I do not believe we need to raise rates right now. Um, I think it would definitely be something to look at next year after after this is over. I think it would potentially save save us a lot of headaches. Um, we're, we're in a good financial position right now, um, and I think it, it will save us any headaches if we decided to change rates this year. Um, but I don't I don't believe we do need to. Um, th this what I just shared on the screen is actually um, what our what all of our rates are at this point in time and the year that we actually implemented them. I actually miss, I think I misspoke last, last month when I said that we haven't raised the septic dumping fees in a while. We actually did two years ago, <laughs> but we raised it. It was raised $5. We went from $75 to $80 two years ago. Tony, one thing we talked about last meeting was we were going to do kind of a survey of the surrounding septage receivers and see where we stand, like benchmark. I did. Uh, I actually looked. Um, everybody is right around seventy-five, eighty dollars. Um, so we, we are right we're with right in line with everybody else. Um, I wasn't able to get MDC's rate, um, but Enfield, um, Bristol, Plainville, Southington, um, Farmington doesn't do it. Doesn't accept any septage anymore. But everybody in this whole South Windsor, all the areas, everyone around us that accepts septage is right around. Um, $80 to $75. All right. So um, you're proposing that we stand pat on all of our rates. Yes. Yeah, I, I have one more comment on that. So if you recall, we've talked about this a bit, that the, the, the state changed the general permit. So the industrial users, instead of going to the state and getting a permit, which they used to pay for, they have to go to RWPCA to get their permit. And that's a, a regulatory change. And, you know, the state doesn't have enough people and they're trying to save money, whatever. So the, the state used to charge for that. I would recommend we add a charge for that to our to our table. Um, it's a new thing. So the, the, the users, if we kept the charge the same as what the state charged, they wouldn't be, they shouldn't be annoyed or aggravated or anything else. Um, and I think it's important because I really believe that 
people respect what you inspect. And by having a charge, you're inspecting, you're, you're, you're watching them, you're managing the, the flows. If we remove the charge, there's kind of, you know, there's still stipulations, there's penalties if they violate the discharge le levels, but I feel like they should pay what they've paid. And now our people are doing the work. I don't, don't disagree with you, Jay. Um, the, the problem that we may have is because since they changed the general permit and all of the extra businesses that are now in that general permit that are required to register, um, and, and it's things like you would, you would not, all doctor's offices are required to register with us, all dentist offices, um, pet grooming shops are supposed to, because of the shampoos and stuff they use, car washes, um, garages, all things of that nature. It's, there's a lot of um, new users, new users wow. that never had to pay anything before. And, and every time I talk to them on the phone, I say, right. And I, and I told them straight out, I was like, at this point in time, there is no charge for this because we don't know the impact it's going to have on our staffing. Um, so it's, I have never said that we're not going to charge for it. And, but it is, the, and I said, basically, once we find out how much work we're going to have to do, we may have to charge for this. I have, I, I, I agree that there does need to be some sort of charge. Um, I think charging a doctor's office, the thousand dollars every five years might be a little excessive. Um, but again, that's, that's up to you guys, but that's my personal thought. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think, um, you know, it's up for, you know, people like Callie canine, the pet groomers and such, you know, they have a harder time making ends meet than the doctor. Right. So I'm a little bit more sympathetic to the people who are at the uh, more uh, difficult, uh, you know, business earnings level. Local uh, repair shop. Yeah. So, I mean, those so, guys. Yeah. But the way the state did it was um, discharge flows less than 10,000 gallons per day paid a certain registration fee of, it was actually 3,500, 3,125. Um, and then greater than 10,000 was 6250. We could even have a, a minimum at which fees are waived. You know, I, I just I just think to go with nothing is is somewhat irresponsible to be honest. Oh, when does this start? Last October. Oh. <laughs> so have we been performing inspections? No, we, we, not yet. Ed. We, we've actually sent letters to all of other businesses asking them to register with us. Um, out of the 130 that letters that we sent out, I want to say we got about 30 back so far. Mm -hmm. are, are we going to do this work ourselves or we contract this out? We're doing this ourselves. Okay. Was it just testing the water? Is that no, there's no, there's nothing there. We're basically it's, there's nothing involved in it at this point in time. Okay. Um, it's, all it is is basically a visual inspection, if anything. It, you know, it's more it's more of the paperwork that is a headache at this point. And I, th I think, though, in fairness, Tony, we've spent a fair amount of time, um, office staff, trying to figure this out. Yes, we have. You know, to Jay's point. So the one other thing as a way to look at it is, do we waive the fee for the first year to help get people on board and have a fee in place for the second year? Well, it might be good that way we can collect data to see how much of an effort it is. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. And since Jay seems to be really kind of like on this and is not never going to let it go, Jay, why don't you be the head of the <laughs> subcommittee that I'm going to appoint to um, uh, explore and work with Tony to uh, – determine what's what's a uh, viable fee schedule and equitable sure yep we can do that we'll do a we'll do a subcommittee and uh report back to the wbca after you know bef well before this time next year so okay. that we're, we're ready with the fees would anyone like to participate in the subcommittee also or are you comfortable with uh so tom tony me anyone else or uh that's 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 fine you guys know what you're doing 
I, I know of a good spot we can meet now. <laughs> <laughs> I hear we can get free coffee there. <laughs> uh-huh. oh, that's right. Did it open? Jay's not agreeing to that, Tony. <laughs> oh, yeah. We opened. We opened on Saturday. Ah. Oh, great. Yep. Okay. So, All right. So then um, we need to um, set a public hearing for... No, no, we don't. We can no? just vote. We do not need to set a public hearing because we're not changing our rates. Oh, it's okay. only when we actually change them? Correct. Okay. okay. So we just need a motion to uh, uh, have for this next fiscal year uh, the same uh, rates that we uh, have had, have now existing. Someone. Correct. Yeah. Anyone want to second that? Second. Any discussion? Quick discussion. I just want a, a clerical update. Mileage is missing an E <laughs> on the top chart. So let's no, that's correct a mileage. that. <laughs> I don't think we need a public hearing to fix that, but. <laughs> Must have happened when I transferred it over to a PDF document. <laughs> So, so motion is second. All right. So any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion carries unanimously. All righty. So uh, let's move on to item number four on the agenda, the status report. Tony. Um, we are good. The, <laughs> everything's great. Uh, no, the lawn, uh, the launder cover, um, bid came in, uh, well, $55,000 less than what we expected. It came in at a cost of $147,000, um, through with RH white. Um, we've already started collecting documents from them. So hopefully, uh, by the end of the summer, they'll be ready to install like the covers to prevent algae and our wonderful freshwater coral. Okay. Um, we've already talked about our industrial user permit. Um, and I just contacted AECOM um, the other day regarding the water pollution control plan. And they just, they told me that they should have it done within the next couple of months. And we actually just hired um, Two new operators. Um, they'll be starting. Uh, one will be starting next Monday, and um, the other one will be starting the following Monday. And then the only position we'll have open will be our inspector's position. All right. Good. Next item on the agenda: treatment facility report. Oh, that's what we just did. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was status. All right. I, uh, oh, did we, sh we should have done the sewer extension first. Eh, that's okay. The sewer extension report <laughs> or status. Um, well, the main, the main one's Hendri uh, Hendricks Lane, which we just clarified. Um, the other one, the Woodland Street project. Um, we actually just provided um, DPW um, the final uh, easement layouts uh, for the south end, south south end, south end of the project. Um, so hopefully within the next week or so, we will get a semi permanent design back to us that we can comment on and get everything finalized. We already actually the bid documents are 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 in the final phase at this point already. So once we get the layout completed, we'll be able to get it over to the state for their review and. Um, get it out to bid. All right. Sounds good. Anyone have any remarks or questions about that report? No. Nope. Okay. Correspondence, gentlemen. Uh, there was none. Okay. There we go. <laughs> March meeting minutes, possible approval. Has everyone had an opportunity to review said minutes? Yeah. And if so, no. yes, that's a yes. Yes, sir. 
Yes. Yeah. Any remarks about them? Comments, corrections, criticisms? No? no. Okay. We ready to put it to a vote then. Anyone want to move to approve the uh, March minutes as stated? So moved. Any discussion? I mean, anyone second? Second. Any discussion? We're all ready to vote on this document. All in favor, say aye. And raise aye. Your hand. One abstention. One abstention. Ed Kelly abstained. So with the one abstention, the motion nonetheless carries. All right. That puts us to the, um, the last item on the agenda, which I guess before I'll reach that, I'll just ask, is there any other business that anyone wants to bring to the authority's attention uh, before we uh, move to adjourn? Just, just as a follow-up from last month's meeting um, uh, regarding the lien forgiveness, I did send Bob D an email um, with the questions from the WPCA. He hasn't gotten back with all the answers, um, but basically the what, he, what I've gotten so far is the enforcer is the tax office. Um, and yes, it does expire after 15 years. He is gonna look into whether or not, he, he actually said that there are ways for the WPCA to still get their money, um, but he's looking into that and getting more confirmation before he gives me an answer. Okay. All right. Very well. Any other remarks? Okay. Seeing no remarks, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if anyone wants to so move. So moved. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you all. It's good to see you all.